this is part of our tribal custom that when you become of age, you go through this like temple where apparently they're breeding giant scorpions and ants. I think they'd be kind of a pain in the ass to take care of, but it's what they do. And we, being born by apparently like Jackie Chan trainers, um, we don't have any problem with this at all. Like this is this is easy stuff. Well, you haven't even been hit yet, actually. You have 26 hit points, still at 26 hit points. I think. Yeah. Oh no, actually we have been damaged. I was just not aware. Ah, this door is locked. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to attempt to unlock it. Boom, unlocked, no problem. Um, for those of you who don't know how to, how to play or anything, I basically, I use, these all correspond to a number, I just hit two, which would be the same thing as clicking lock, pick here, and then targeting the door. All right, ooh, you see a raised plate, no problem. Gotta tell I have this game pretty much memorized. So, these, uh, you see these little plates on the ground? They might be kind of difficult to see. They're actually kind of difficult to see. Um, every time I do this, they're firing a wooden bullet at you. But I don't think ever in the history of playing this game have I actually been hit by any of these poles. So whoever the hell designed this part of the Indiana Jones style trap really, really, really sucked at it. Um, you can actually loot these sharpened poles. And they sell for money, and I, I don't recall how much money, but I, I think I actually recall it being kind of a good deal when you sell them all at once. So we're going to pick it up anyways. I don't think they weigh that much. And if they do, we'll just drop them. I mean, money's, money's pretty tight in the beginning of this game. Ooh, look at that eye. It's kind of difficult to see some of this stuff. Pretty much everything in this game is brown. Like, they did it to kind of, um, to, uh, to enhance that feeling of everything is dead and desolate, but in the end, everything's pretty just, just brown. Oh, look at that. Okay. Alright, so how many poles do we have? We have ten poles. Good enough. If I wanted to, I could use it as a melee weapon. I could even throw it. I don't think my throwing skill or my melee weapon skill is actually that great, though. Ooh, more healing powers. Okay, let's try. Throw it, 41% chance. Mm, nice, I got him. Two hit points, wow, that was pathetic. I can punch harder than I can hit someone with a projectile spear. That's, uh, that's pretty scary. Ooh, yeah, I don't have a very good, uh, skill. Oh, crap, I'm poisoned. Okay. Well, now we're gonna punch this guy a lot. There we go. Yeah. Alright, combat ended, no problem. Um, well, I mean, a bit of a problem. I am poisoned. I'm not sure how bad the red scorpion poison is. I can't imagine it's too bad. Yeah. Alternative to doing a kick for four action points, I can do an aimed strong punch, and I can hit, you know, right in, like, the head, like the head or something. Um, it's kind of a nifty feature in this game, because they actually do this aiming section for every type of creature you can run into. Um, and they really do change around the parts, like it's not just everything has a head substitute or something like that. Sometimes you look at like a robot, you have no idea what kind of effect your shot is going to have on it because you'll be hitting like the CPU cervix motor or something. Um, <laughs> cervix motor, like a vagina. Um, and you just will have no idea what kind of effect. If you're hitting a human, you can shoot for the eyes, and the obvious effect is that if you, if you hit them and crit on them, it's probably going to blind them. I mean, that makes enough sense, right? Here we go. Let's check this pot. Ooh. Because every Indiana Jones temple has plastic explosives sitting in a pot. This is like a, a small tutorial for the game. One of those tutorials where they don't tell you jack shit, they kind of just expect you to go through it. But kudos to them because they did it well.
Okay, so this right here is uh, an anti-venom. It's actually made out of the uh, uh, out of the basic little bits of red scorpion, which is uh, those scorpions that were attacking me that are giant because they're radiated. Um, I could use this right now, and it would get rid of the poisoned effect on me. And it's non-addictive, which is good. Addiction in this game is kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. Them. And uh, for the most part, I think if we get addicted, we'll likely be reloading. There is a lot of reloading that is going to happen in this game. I'm going to forewarn you now. That's just kind of the nature of the Fallout uh, series. A lot of things just really can mess you up. Okay. Uh, um, let's, let's just start this one off with Doc Ratty. Okay. So, this right here is going to be your first usage of explosives. I hope it goes well. Set it for a minute. Pop it on the ground. There it is. We're going to walk away now. Just kind of wait. Hmm. More likely we'll detonate prematurely, because I have like no trap skill whatsoever, and don't intend to. I wish the traps were more feasible to use in this game, but they just... There's not enough in, in game to build your character around using them. Um, otherwise, there I mean, there's a tactic where you can go up and sneak, and then you can sneak around people, and you can literally plant detonated explosives in people's backpacks, and then watch them like explode. But if they catch you doing it, they'll oh, oh crap, I'm starting to get hurt. Uh, if they catch you doing it, they'll they'll start messing you up. It really doesn't work out very well, and it's not very easy to do. Okay, so I have 10 hit points. I'm going to use my first healing powder. My perception is 7 currently. This is going to heal me up to 27, which is, I mean, that's a good majority of my hit points right now. But then it's going to drop my perception. Uh, that's temporary. You know, I'm not screwed for the rest of the game because of it. But my guy is uh, pretty much high right now. Um, it kind of impedes my ability to breathe, as you can imagine. Nothing! Sweet. Big door. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah! Let's walk in here. Greetings, Rowdy. I have the honor of being your final challenge. To continue your quest, you must defeat me in unarmed combat. Sounds good. I've been kicking ass in here. Um, I got some questions first. What would you like to know? Why do we have to fight? Well, the path of the Chosen One is not an easy trial to walk, Rowdy. You will be faced with many challenges throughout your lifetime, and the most of these difficult uh, the most difficult of these will be dealing with your fellow man. There, w <laughs> there will come a time when diplomacy and tact will prove to be useless, and your hand must be raised instead. This challenge prepares you to face another human. Look him in the eyes, and know that you may have to kill him. I disagree with you. I think that a peaceful solution to any problem is possible. You may be correct, Rowdy. But not in your current situation. You must defeat me in order to succeed in your trial. Look, I don't know all your strengths and weaknesses, and you don't know mine. Accidents do happen. So what if one of us inadvertently kills the other? Let's just end this now rather than take that chance, okay? Hmm, I see your point. I wouldn't want to be responsible for killing you when all I meant to do was test your metal. Very well, you may pass, Chosen One. Thanks, see you back in the village. So, you'll find that... Basically, I mean, I could have easily chosen just to fight him. You don't kill him. You, you totally could, but you don't kill him, and everything works out. Um, but because of my high charisma, my high intel uh, intelligence, and my speech skill, I can pretty much persuade people just to not fight. I believe, but I haven't tested it myself, so don't quote me on it. If you have the right stats, 
you can go through both games without ever having to really enter combat, or very minimally, like you don't have to kill like anything. Since I killed everything in the uh, dungeon, finishing it off, the, uh, the quest leveled me up. So we're going to go spend that. I have 20 skill points, which is the maximum you can have when you level up, um, I think, unless you don't have gifted. I think you get 25 at that point. Yeah. Um, 20 is the maximum you can have with 10 intelligence and gifted. And I'm going to spend that... Um, really, honestly, I'm going to spend that in unarmed for the first uh, level. Because this is basically what we're going to be using for a little bit. The last point, I'll spend... Oh, you know what? Here, I'm going to take this last one out here. Keep it at... I'll give it at 100. I'm going to spend the rest in here. Speech is good to get a move. All right, so this is the Elder. Congratulations, Chosen One. You have survived the Temple of Trials. Are you ready for your quest? Of course. Then take this flask. It is from the Holy Vault 13. Vic, a traitor in Klamath, brought it to us. He may know where the vault is. You may also need some of what they call money. Oh, the way she Here. Says uh, okay, is there any more that you can tell me? I cannot help much. So much has been lost from the long ago. What wisdom do you seek? Uh, where is Vault 13? By the way, a um, little bit of trivia. In Fallout 1, your hero comes from Vault 13. The Holy 13? I cannot help you. Only the Vault Dweller knew. His tales have the sound of a perilous journey. All right. Um, here, what let's, let's do ask you about the kick. It is a holy artifact, the Garden of Eden creation kit. The discs promise it will make our lands green and our village prosperous. It will save us. More, I do not know. Okay, no problem. Let's barter then, real quick. Let's find how much this is worth. Five bucks. Dandy. Absolutely dandy. She gave me 152 bucks, so um, I can buy all the pants. Find I Vic in Klamath. We are counting on you. All right, Grandma. Let's go. So uh, we can just start talking around to people. I kind of know who to talk to. So, all right, this is uh, Fergus crying about something as usual. What a bitch. Please fix the well. All right, I think if fixing it's eight. experience points. Be careful, he says. <laughs> Is he threatening me? Oh, there we go. I'll show you for fixing the well. Okay, um, let's go over here. Oh, damn it, I went up the mountain with this guy to teach me. Alright, how goes your quest? Pretty well. Maybe you need a warrior yourself. Uh, what can you help me with? I know to fight with fists and feet. Think you can learn that? What can you teach me? I know all. You know all I can teach you. Damn it, see, yeah, if I hadn't gone up and unarmed, he probably would have taught me a little bit, and then I could just spent it later. Oh well, no harm, no foul, I guess. This guy right here can teach me a little bit in melee weapons, which I do need help with, because I kind of blow. You're a swift student. Looks like you've learned all I can teach you. Good stuff. Uh, also, I got my perception back, so I'm no longer high. Okay, so let's re oh, hold on, guys. There appears to be something wrong with my keyboard. 